this video, we're going to start the process for integrating our uploader into our task model. Now, you may notice something if you go to our application. There's no spot where we can actually enter any tasks in, which is perfectly fine uh, because I wanted to do this all manually. You've seen how scaffolds work, which is great, but there also is a lot of value in doing a lot of this manually. So uh, before I create that controller, I want to first, though, add our file upload value into uh, into the task database. So I'm just going to do Rails, G, migration, add uh, file, or add, I'm going to call it task file. Add task file to tasks, and call it task underscore file. And I'm going to give it of type text. Uh, you usually don't want to do a string for this because sometimes AWS sends back a really long string because they cache the URL value. So I'm going to do text just to be safe. And I, after this goes through, I will run a migration. So rake db migrate. And that's going to add the uh, task file into our database. And after it goes through, I'll just verify it, just because it's always a good idea to verify. So go down to tasks, and there we go, task file of type text. So that's all good. Now let's create our controller manually. So I'm gonna do Rails G controller, and we want this to be tasks. Usually a good rule of thumb, if you're using a scaffold or a model generator, you use singular words. And if you use a, if you're doing a controller by itself, you use a plural. So this is tasks and we want the show, new, and edit methods to be created. We're also going to create some others manually, but I don't like doing it with this controller generator because that can actually be messy. So I'm going to run this through. It's going to create a few things. It's going to create our task controller file, but it's going to add some routes. And then it's also going to create our view files. And this is a reason why, even though we need a create action, we need a update action, we need a dis delete action, we need all of that. But we're not going to put that here in our shortcuts because then it would actually create views for each of those which is not something that you want to do. So that's why whenever I'm creating a controller with CRUD functionality, I put it uh, just like this. So that's how you create a controller manually. Now, if you go here and look at tasks controller, you'll see it created our task controller that inherits from application controller. And in the next video, we'll go into how we can actually customize this to fit what our requirements are for the tasks.